do this. Let's do it. Ready? Ready. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Good. Okay. No, no, no. We're doing it. We're doing, we're doing it. it. We're doing it. Um, hello, friends. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Um, this is Two Pearls in a Pod. We're here. I'm Sarah. I'm Paige. And this is our Everything We Knit in 2023. <laughs> um, this is, we're flying by the seat of our pants here. This is a first for us. There's knits everywhere and we haven't really got a plan, but I think we'll just see how we go. I have to say it's a bit chaotic. Like it's, it's I'm, feeling chaotic. A bit, I'm feeling a bit anxious and a bit overwhelmed, but hopefully we'll just like settle into it. But this is, I don't know, something different like for us and um, how is. we um, make videos. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm excited. I'm also, I was just saying earlier, very intimidated because Sarah has been an absolute machine. Um, I'm excited to try and meet her level next year, but we're really excited to show you all of the little things that we've been working on this year. Um, and we'll also be talking about our favorite yarn. We're going to be, yeah, well, I think at the end we'll, we'll talk through some of our like wrap up sentiments, including some favorites and some picks and some things like that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. Um, we should start with the fact that we're meeting on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And we are very grateful and we're really pleased to be here. It is such a nice day today. So you guys will notice we're not wearing knitwear. I haven't knit any summer knits this year, not yet anyway. And I like, it's, it's too hot. We're having not our usual tea. We're having a delicious gin and tonic with some local gin, which is the Bloody Shiraz gin from Four Pillars. Um, Sarah changed into a white top to try on her knitwear, which I think is very ambitious and dedicated because it's very, it's very warm. Um, but yeah, we'll go through. Yeah, so I quick. have this vision of being like, I think one of my favorite things when I watch these everything I knit videos is sort of seeing a lot of garments and seeing people wearing garments and seeing how they're worn. And I really wanted to be able to demonstrate that to you, but like, it's hot, so we'll see. We'll give it a go. We'll see. Um, what should we start with? What would you like to start with? Miss? Maybe, okay, I think let's just start with, um, maybe just like an accessories roundup. Let's do it. Um, we obviously can't show everything we've made. We've both made lots of gifts um, and lots of accessories, which are kind of uh, all over the place. But I brought some of the socks that I made this year. Okay. You... I have uh, one and a half pairs of socks. Okay, that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I brought all the socks so that cool. I made this year, which is kind of wild. I'm so impressed. Um, at one point in the year, I was like, I'm going to make a pair of socks a month. I remember that. And that, in hindsight, was a bit ambitious. It's not that I think it's ambitious. I just think, like, it I'm, becomes a chore when you want to knit other things, too. Especially, like, if you, you're not really feeling socks. Yeah. And I think I just... I, I don't mind socks, but they're not my favourite thing to make, so... Like, I go in... I, I get into moods with knitting. Mm. And, like, I feel like I used to be... Like, not that I, I used to make it a chore, but I used to like set rules for myself or like almost just be a bit harsh and feel like I need to finish something before starting the next thing or, you know, but it, at the end of the day, it's a hobby and I've just decided I'm just going to do what I feel like. So yeah, alas, good attitude. So I end up making six pairs for myself. I feel like, um, like holding up fish or something. <laughs> Have you seen that thing on, um, that like Tinder photo of, or like me holding up my fish, like my socks, like guys holding fish on dating profiles. Yeah, was it you who showed me that? Yes. It was so, such a funny <laughs> Um But these are my prize uh, catches um, of the year. Um, I made some basic bed socks. Um, this Very is nice. a pattern from Maker Maker. These ones Ooh. didn't get a lot of wear, but I think that's because they were outshone by my slipper socks that I made, the Doppler Toffler Samuskan ones. They do kind of fill the same yeah. purpose a little. Yeah. Um, so... They're kind of, they're still to earn their keep, but super, super cozy. Um, and then these are my Hermione's Everyday Socks. They're really cool. I'm just like re-appreciating the pattern. Um, is it focusing? Yeah. Yeah, I think, nice. I think it's going all right. Um, it's just a great free pattern. It's a real classic. It's like every, I feel like everyone's knitted a pair and for a reason, yeah. they're great. Highly recommend. They're just like a little bit different. A little bit. And that's perfect, yeah. I think. It's that Goldilocks zone between like 
not too much, not too little. This yeah. is in the hodgepodge skeins, which I've knit quite a few pairs of socks out of and it's held up really well. It's a beautiful, soft sock yarn. Love it. Um, this is just some vanilla socks. I used the Maker Maker basic sock pattern. Um, They're a really nice color combo. This is the Ren and Ollie uh, sock yarn. Um, and oh, these thing. are the first socks I made like in my like re-emergence of making socks. So this is like one of the first things I made this year. Is this in chai? Uh, yes. She's good. She's good. <laughs> the main color is called Evergreen. Um, they held up pretty well. The only issue which I spoke of very early on was the fact that um, they're toe yeah. up. Um, and so the heel is not my favorite sort of heel because it's a short row heel. And because it's cast off, the um, top flares, which I don't care for. And I talked about redoing it. It kind of has- To no one's surprise, I haven't. It kind of has like a bit of a like look to it though, like a slight, like almost frill kind of to it. You don't like that. Well, it doesn't look I good like when it. they're on my feet. Oh, well, that's fine. I like it. But, yep. Then these ones are the intersection socks, um, which I- Ah, oh, these socks. Um, <laughs> what an adventure they were. Which I, had to knit about four times to get them right. I, I feel like this was a real saga over the course of multiple videos. You know what though? They got there. They're so they're oh, I'm so, so glad I pushed impressive. Through. Like look how impressive the work on that is. And this is using the Regia Premium yarn with yak in it. And they feel good. They they've held up well. They've felt it a little bit on the foot, but as no, but they as look, we talked about Oh that, yeah, but don't like mind, whatever. Don't mind. They also like they look they look like they've worn really well. Like you can still see like the pattern really well. Yeah. Were they a, can I ask, were they a hard pattern? No. Cause they look like, they look like a fully cabled hectic. No. It's an it's an eight row repeat, but it's basically a four row repeat offset. Um, They're very cool. This is also toe up, but this on this pair, I did a, I did the rib um, separate and then grafted it so that I would have a, a nice top. I've talked about this right, before. Right, yeah, yeah. And I think that's what I would do if I was ever going to do toe up socks again. That's absolutely what I'd do is I'd knit the top top down and graft it at the bottom of the is ribbing. Is the grafting annoying? I mean, I it's it like you're putting annoying. the effort in. You're putting the effort in. I don't mind putting a little bit more effort in to make it nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm not shaming you. I'm just like, I don't know if I have that anymore. Um, I wore these ones a lot to work. I work to work. I normally just wear in winter, like my Doc Martens, and with these in them. And wow, they really hold up. They've they've given how much wear they have had. I'm really happy with these ones. It's a really great pattern, and I love this yarn. Oh, so can wait. We'll get to the end of the socks, and then I think I'll ask my question. Okay. Which everyone now probably can anticipate what that question is. Um, and then <laughs> I this love the pattern. Is love the yarn. The, love. Um, I think it's called like the. Simple garter rib socks by Belinda Glynn, who is here. I knit. Um, this is a free pattern. I take one, I take okay, one. Um, and I used Al of Athena, which has some Stellina in it. Um, I don't care much for a Stellina as a result of this project. It's fine. It's just you can't see it, so I feel like there's no point. I think it's because it's a black Stellina. I wonder if it was a if like it was a lighter, lighter shimmerier Stellina. Because like if you look very closely, you can see it, and you can slightly feel it, but yeah. I can't really see it. Not worth it. Is my I love, assessment. I love broken rib. They're very pretty. Also, I love this color. Like I know you were like, what's going on? Like, why am I getting this color? But I'm, I'm very into it. I mean, and, and as a non colorful yarn knitter, like, like I wouldn't use this color for garments, but like for socks, it's fun. And it's nice to have some like more unusual colors. I love that I can be fun with, with socks. Um, and then my last pair of socks that I made myself was these. These are the Hibernal socks by Summer Lee. They're so pretty. Um, ah, these are, the these, I think these are my favorite socks. Um, I love, oh, The pattern is really beautiful. I need to knit these. The I love pattern them. is really nice. I really love Summer Lee patterns. And these are like, I was like, if I, ever I was having a bad day or something and I wanted to cheer myself up, these are the socks I would use to do that. The heel flappers, but like, it's like, you know, a slip stitch heel flap. Oh, can you see? Can you see? Okay, it's a slip stitch heel flap. That's not revolutionary. Everyone does not But like in this yarn, on this sock. Given just... how much I've worn these as well, I thought like they're so soft. I thought they would, would like fare alpaca. worse than they did. Yeah, because these alpaca. are a, this, 
yarn is alpaca, like I said, alpaca sock yarn. So it's 20% or 25% nylon, but the remainder is alpaca. But they have a beautiful like hairiness. They've to got them. a beautiful halo. The tweed on them is perfection. Oh. Um, but yes, I love them. These are my favorite They're socks so of the year. They're so pretty. I kind of like recommend. don't want to waste my, my sock yarn of this on doing the petite knit over the socks. Over the socks. Because what if they're just not as cute as this? You can, you can, this still exists in the world. You can buy this. I know. That's, that's reassuring. Mm. There's nothing worse than finding it and then wanting to be stingy with its use because you don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but that is my, that's my sock haul. Amazing. Have you got some socks? Um, I only have one and a half pairs, as I said. That's good. I have. Nice. Still good. A pair of very basic, a little bit felted because I haven't shaved them before this video. Sorry. Do you shave yours? Uh, no. Uh, maybe I might in future. I do, like usually, but I haven't before this video. I, I have just anything. a pair of vanilla socks. This pattern is from Summerlee Knits. It is a free pattern, I believe. It is the I'm So Basic yes, sock. Yes, that's free. Um, and it's so pretty. Like, I don't know. I just think her, like, her sock patterns are my favorite. It's got a slip stitch heel flap. Um, and then just, I don't know, there's not much to say. Um, I've used the Javul sock yarn for the heel and toe. And then I've used, this is just like a little bit of leftover yarn from, it's from Owl of Athena. But what was it from? Oh, was it part of a sock set that you weren't going to use? Yes, that's right. I was like, is there some other thing I've knitted floating around somewhere? But no, I think, so it was part it was of just the knitting or something. Yeah. But like, honestly, like, eh, I didn't really care for it. I kind of, but like, I love this combination, mm. but like, whatever. But like, it adds a bit of interest. And then this is Ren and Ollie in the shade Hold the Mustard, which is a really oh my fun God. I love that name. One. And I also love, like, I love the colors on it. They're kind of just like a bit more of a dull pastel like a like a gray toned pastel so got a pair of them they look they look well loved they are well loved um <laughs> I, I probably should have made them look a bit better before the video I, it crossed my mind too okay. that all my knits are not like in their prime but i think that's more um we'll do better next year <laughs> no but i think that's more in keeping with like this is how we use our knits and it's yeah um and then this is quite I feel like you might think this is quite funny. I haven't blocked this and it's only a single sock. You still haven't got the toe on it either. I know, <laughs> I'm so ashamed. So this is another I'm so basic sock. I was like, this is, remember when I said I was in my sock era? <laughs> <laughs> it was after the one pair of socks. You made socks, one pair. And, and like, I was like, I'm in my sock era, go ahead and buy like 20 skates. Anyway, um, the yarn that I've used, again, Ren and Ollie Nymph. Love, like, this is, like, one of my favorite um, colorways that they do. Let me just uh, focus in. Yeah, it's got, like, hot pink in it and, like, a green. Oh. I feel like you guys get the gist, but, like, a green sort of uh, base to it. Um, and then the hot pink is a Melon City Dye Works one that I kind of just already had in stash. And the reason I'm laughing is, okay, firstly, this is an Eye of Partridge heel, which I Love thought it. like I'd try. Stunning, stunning. I still think, I know like everyone's like, this is the best. I still think I prefer a slip stitch heel. I think the look, anyway, I'll show you guys. You can like decide, but I, I don't know. Anyway, that's my thought. And then I thought, oh, at least I've got the single sock to show that I've completed and that I whipped it out this morning. And look how annoying I am. Like, I'm sorry, what is this? And then I thought, oh, did I literally just <laughs> pull the live stitches off? But no, I've ever gone through the effort of just putting a lifeline <laughs> through those lines. It would have taken longer to do that to just graft it. <laughs> Why am I like this? I put a lifeline in because I couldn't be bothered Kitchener stitching the ends. But I just, uh, I think I too, I'm too obsessed with finished objects that I couldn't stop at that point. Like, then, I'm too fixated on getting things finished that I couldn't, I just can't imagine your, well, I can't work out your brain on I one. still had to cast on and do the other sock. And also, I think I, you're going to hate this, but I think I'm going to undo it because this was before... You worked out your perfect sock? Yeah, that, that was the mission I was on. So my perfect sock, you guys gave the great idea of like once you've done the heel. Because remember how I said like it stretches heaps over the top oh, of the foot? Oh, over the kind of the bridge of your foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. someone like said the great idea of just when you pick up these side stitches, you just pick up more, more. and do like a slightly longer bit here and then you have more width Work, here. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Um, and I was kind of like up to here when I saw that message. <laughs> 
<laughs> very um, grateful for it. I'm so grateful. Still almost finished, but didn't. <laughs> so, but I think I might undo them at least like up to there and then just like do that again. And also because like I haven't finished it, I've like lost all my momentum anyway. Yeah. So like even if I start again, I actually don't care. Whereas if I was in the moment, I would not start them again. But anyway, that's it's, where I'm at. Yeah. Nice. Um, I have a few other accessories. Let's go. Um, it's definitely, it's not all of them. I don't know where things go, like hats and stuff. I think I just make them and then they just get absorbed into like the Your world. Wardrobe. The world and... Your car. The, yeah, the car. The friends. I don't know. But my favourite one is the one I still have, which is this, which is my bulky weight essential 2x2 two two rib beanie by Andrea Gorn. Um, this is a fantastic pattern that I tested and I have made three versions of now. This one is the most special for me because this is the one I used using yarn I bought when I was on holiday in Mexico. Um, and it's just like, it's quite a rustic kind of hand spunny um, beanie. <laughs> we'll work it out one day, I, I don't, don't worry. worry. <laughs> um, and I love it because it's like warm and it's like a really, it's a snug hat. It's a snug hat. I, I love it so much because I love that it really showcases the yarn. The yarn. We've said this before, but like, when you just want to get like a sentimental yarn, but you don't want to buy a full jumper quantity, but then you don't want to make something kind of crappy out of it, and you don't want a pair of 10 ply socks. Like, this, this is, is what great. you do, and it's basic, but it really shows it. And it doesn't have to be like the softest yarn in the world. No. Like, it's just, it's really cool. And wasn't this dyed with like turmeric or something? Um, it was with a plant called Pericon. It's so cool. Maybe that's what it's named. It Spanish. was giving turmeric. Turmeric, because it's a turmeric color. Um, this is my favorite, and it's a fantastic pattern, and I made multiple. Um, and then the other thing I made was um, real basic entry level 2021, Love. 2022 era. <laughs> I made a Sophie scarf and matching penny gloves. Um, this was weird. This is so. This was so bougie. This was a alpaca and mohair blend. And they are so soft. Oh, I would hold your hand all day. <laughs> they're very soft. Um, they're great. Like this, like, it's such a classic. I really like them as a combo. Like yeah, they're the really cute that I together. Used both together. They're so cute together. Like imagine in winter with your little coat and your little pink gloves I, and your little yeah. Stuff. That's this was like one of my favorite things to wear as a combo, and um, it's like so soft, and the garter makes it so drapey. Um, this is not a revelation that the Sophie scarf is great. But I love it. Um, and this was one of like, this was a success for me this year because it got a lot of wear. Like, it's not exciting, it's not fancy, but no, it's, it's utilitarian cool. and it's perfect. It's really cool. So, yes. There's that other one. Oh, we haven't met the pattern, but there's another one going around that's very similar to this pattern, actually. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. It looks nice, but it's got a cool edge. It's got a cool edge. Yeah. Um, I love the garter on the, this, though. It's like it's got a lot just, of squish. Yeah. And very Sarah color. Yeah, who's surprised? <laughs> <laughs> um, I left one of the gloves on the tram, and I realized <gasps> as soon as I got off the tram, and I had never run harder in my entire life because <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I'm not buying a whole nother ball of both to replace it. Like they used up all the yarn strategically, so I was like, I have never legged it to the next tram stop. That like, is devastating. Yeah, I mean, I'm so glad I realized straight away, and then I like ran. Fortunately, it was in the city, so the tram wasn't going very fast, but. Um, I got back on the tram and I was like, <gasps> and I was like, get out of my way. Yeah, and, oh, and if it was like a busy tram. It was a busy no. tram. Um, but Disaster. it was worth it because I still have both gloves. You made it. Made it. Makes it even more special. <laughs> I worked for these. It's so much sweat. Um, so that's the story about my gloves. They're some of the accessories that I made this year. Um, I think, I, I don't know. I like watching garments, so that's what I'm here for. Um, but maybe that... Yeah. Are we onto garments? I'm onto garments. Was that your segue? I'm obviously also onto garments. Cool. Should I start with? I'll start with this one. Okay, we'll start with this one. This is my V-neck vest by Petite Knit, and I have worn this so much. Have you? Oh, good. I have worn it so much, and I get so many compliments. It is so soft. How soft. It is so drapey. It's so it light. It's so light. And like, it's perfect because, like, you know, when you're. Uh, this is going to sound so obvious. But you know, when it's like a warm day, but sometimes it's just like a slight chill. Mm -hmm. And you don't. 
the core I don't want to say it the Just core it. is don't warm don't fight it don't fight it <laughs> the core is warm but without being too warm and like the armholes on this I made this deliber deliberately oversized so the armholes on this are like quite baggy so I feel like quite cool yeah you know? it's very trendy it feels very trendy yeah. and then I wear it with like I can wear it with so many different things underneath it like I wear it with like like I wear it with this underneath it I would wear it with like t-shirts long sleeve turtlenecks like anything um, and I even tried to wear my scrubs underneath it and that's the only time I've ever drawn the line because Dacon was like, no. no. <laughs> like, I, to be fair, I asked his opinion. I was like, what do you think? Is this? I was like, is this weird? And he was like, are those scrubs? I was like, yeah. Anyway, basically it's really versatile and I love it a lot. Um, I made it with the knitting for olive yarn, like the, um, four the ply. Um, held together with Izia and the reason I chose this Izia is because it had like a dark like the, the cool. silk strand inside was dark um, because I didn't want it to like mull and like look too well not that I didn't want it to mull but I didn't want it to you be just wanted a darker jumper. I wanted a cooler toned yeah. darker jumper and I feel like the knitting for olive was warmer when it arrived than I expected and so this really cooled it down um, and yeah I love it I just it's I mean, and this is not a revelation. <laughs> it's not a revelation that a strand of four ply and a strand of mohair makes a beautiful garment, but it oh, is so light. It's my favorite. I mean, we'll like you'll see that we'll talk about it later. But like, I'm all about rather than using an eight ply, oh. I'm all about using a four ply and a two ply. I think this is the other thing is like I always thought that a four ply plus a two ply equals a six ply, and a four ply and a four ply equals an eight ply. And then I realized that that's actually that's not, quite true. That's not true. Like the math doesn't math like that. Um, and once I realized that my garments have been so, so much nicer, nicer, like so much less dense and much more drapey and comfortable. So yeah, I love. Good one. Really good one. So cool. Also, so petite knit trendy. You know? Yes. Also the V-neck itself, I feel like I was kind of weirdly, oddly intimidated about doing a V-neck neatly. It's but not it's hard. Stunning. It's not hard. If anyone is hesitating because they're worried about like, oh, I got it to finally focus, about doing that V bit. It's like the easiest thing in the world. I think Yay. I did the whole garment and procrastinated doing the trims. <laughs> that doesn't sound like me at all um, for ages because of that, but it's actually so, so easy. It's really easy. Nice. Uh, maybe I'll do some brown garments. Yes, yeah, do your brown garments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things I did very early in the year was my um, chill lip sweater. Oh, very, very let's Sarah. See, let's see. Um, yeah, this is, I really enjoyed making this. It's a really loose open gauge. Um, so it's great for kind of between seasons. Um, I made it super cropped, like it just- For a um, high waist. Yeah, I mean, it's all about that high waist life. It's, I just love it. This is using a strand of uh, Rowan felted tweed and a strand of Kremke Soul Kid mohair. Yeah. Oh no, it's here, it's easy mohair. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and I played around a lot with gauge, but in the end, I just ended up following the pattern and the scallops are great. It's, I find scallops it really like, great. I wear this one to work a lot. I find it really like nice with high waist This jeans. is like your favorite knit, I swear. I think when I- still? We'll find out. Sorry, to be gonna make us to wait until the end of the But video. this one is like, it's so easy. I really enjoyed wearing this because it's so easy. This combination is great. I mean, I don't use a lot of Rowan anymore, but I think the felted tweed is actually a really fantastic yarn. Um, it's great value and good colours, and it's worked really perfectly. In Sorry, this. good colours. Didn't you dye this? <laughs> I forgot about the that. The colours are stunning. Look at how amazing this is. No, that turns out she came What a humble like, brag. It's like, <laughs> this colour is beautiful. It's like, it's a colour that I made. <laughs> Overall, Sorry, busted. This overall, is why you don't like co-host with someone <laughs> on a video. Especially when you want a narrative to go your way. Yeah. Um, yes, look, okay, I did dye this one because the colour that I did buy was a bit gross. <laughs> um, You're making it worse. Actually, the colour that doesn't I take it back. No, overall, um, this, They're not. They're this fine. is a good one. I, it's really comfy. It's an easy wear. Tulip, classic, what's not to love. So, yeah. We're into it. Um, cool. Should we go to the next brown? Oh yeah. Um, oh, I like this as a as a way to go through knits, <laughs> like color wise. Maybe this one. Yeah. Oh, another classic Zara color. <laughs> Hello. We're transition. Look, this is it. We're 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 moving into greens oh. via yellow. 
This is my April cardigan um, that I made using uh, Maya Baby Alpaca. It's an eight ply. It's 100% alpaca. It's 100% beautiful. I haven't fixed the button band yet. It's fine, no shame. There's a lot that we haven't done. So it's in the exact same state as when I wore it in a video a few weeks ago. This is so neat. Oh. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to redo it. It's There's also like no impetus to do it at the, like motivation to do it at the moment. Like it is like 30 degrees. Yeah, I know, March. like it's, that's it. It's like, it's not gonna happen now until maybe March at best. Whatever. Um, but again, like this is such a classic pattern the april cardigan the shoulder is just or oh, not that. you know i love a shoulder <laughs> <laughs> so the good. shoulder on this is so beautiful i made the arms extra long because that's how i like them mm -hmm. um the fit is so nice like it sits really well it's got that really it's got that really deep rib um i really need to finish this because it's perfect it's like it's a really easy throw on it, sits. it is it sits perfectly it fits you beautifully it, you have the amazing buttons that aren't on it yet but the amazing they, buttons hopefully that are haven't, perfect for haven't it. heard from the guy yet oh i thought you got them straight away no no, oh. no, no. anyway oh. i think that's not happening ne never mind we might not have the perfect never buttons mind. but it just like it sits what i like about this is it sits on the shoulder really well so you know how some cardigans will sort of just like yeah. fall off your shoulders no the shoulder the shaping shoulder shaping just holds it on the shoulder really mm. well I can't say much for this in terms of like wear because I haven't worn it yet, um, but I'm looking forward to being able to wear it well, come autumn. As someone who has a sweater in it and has worn it to death in the hospital because it's like, it was my first knitted garment, oh, so yeah. I wore it to death. And I also didn't know how to change balls of yarn, so I would knot the two yarns together and Just then keep, keep knitting through the knot. So it's like Bless. pretty... Uh, precarious um it's worn really well it doesn't cool. feel it's yeah good. like which is pretty impressive for such a soft alpaca mm. with this one i made the decision to knit a bit tighter so the pattern uses a four mil needle but i used a 3.75 because i wanted a more snug gauge and so i had to do a little bit of maths and so i've done a different size to what i would normally do um which kind of worked out sizing wise which was a bit of a fluke it feels like but it worked really well um so it is perhaps a bit less drapey but it's warmer so I it's going to get more wear up is my theory i think you've presumably blocked it it's just yep. so neat yeah um i still think the drapiness is still there. oh it's got drape but it's not yeah. as drapey as another garment that i've made in the same yarn yeah sure fair enough um should i move on to that yes. one yes 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 so apologies guys still haven't woven in the ends <laughs> But well, I'm, that, in, I'm in no position to But that. that has also not stopped stop me from wearing it. I have worn this so much. This is the Sile uh, Slipover. Who was it by? Who Petite else? Knit. Oh, Who okay. Else? We need to do better. So Petite Knit Sile Slipover. Um, I knitted it in Bendigo Woolen Mills uh, yarn. It's in their Alpine one, which unfortunately you can't get anymore, but they do lots of like variations Similar. of the same thing. So they did the Woodlands one this year. This is from last year, the yarn. Um, I have worn this so much because it looks so good with denim. And I just yeah. feel so cool. Again, like it, it, great. it gives me cool factor. <laughs> You know, my like v-neck. I feel so cool wearing this with like a little tee and like the front tucked inside because I'm not Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still a French tuck gal, so I Always. like to tuck it into my um into my like like wide leg jeans um, and feel really cool about it. The texture is really cool. The drape, honestly. So I think I told you guys. Look, it does feel a bit super washy still. Mm -hmm. Like I can feel it, but I don't care when I wear it. And like the drape is not super washy drape. Like the drape is really really good on this. Um, so I it's love it. I love it. I'm happy with it. Um, I will weave in the ends and I think I'll reblock it as well and put the elastic in, like I said. I, did we block? We never actually blocked no, it. No, we did so the I don't steamer. Think, I don't think you I, would say reblock. But can't you say it was a steam it block? Like, don't people say that? Isn't that a thing? Not I mean, really. we just kind of waved the steamer over it. Yeah, but we're not going to like iron it with the steamer. I guess the other thing I wanted I to that. point out. That gives me actual anxiety. <laughs> like you could burn the fibers. No, nah, I mean, I have a steam generator iron, so it's a bit safer. Okay, That's such a like humble. I know. <laughs> I have a steam generator. Um, the sh I just wanted to show oh, you guys no. the shoulder because we've been, you know, shoulders have been a thing. Look how like neat and nice the shoulder um, part of the pattern is. Like, it's so pretty. Don't you reckon? It's really pretty. Um, it really makes the garment. And I, I really stand by the two by two rib really suits it too hmm. for the trims. Yeah. I also made a silly <laughs> slip over. Here's mine. 
I forget that this is like darker. Like I think I look at this and I'm like, it's like so similar to mine. And so like, oh, it's so cool. Cause it's like denim. It's so cool. I haven't got, I haven't got used to wearing this. I haven't worn it much. Um, really? Which is that silly because, me. because I love it. And I feel like it will look so good with shirts underneath. Oh, it. I wear and it to work with yeah. a shirt. But like casually, like, oh, I kind of like it. Well, that's what I mean. I think like the, the blue on the denim is really cool. Um, so, guys, I'm so cool. So revolutionary. Who would have thought of wearing blue, <laughs> denim. And, blue and denim? Um, but yes, I knit. I think we knit the same size. So mine is probably a little bit like uh, less positive ease. Um, so it's probably less cool. Oh, um, it's still cool. Don't take nice. it away from yourself. You're still cool. It's still nice. Um, I used a yarn called, it was a Cleckerton yarn, which is called Midlands Merino, which is 100% Tasmanian Merino. Incredibly soft. Doing a spin because oh, it was annoying me. Um, it's, pro it's like, it's probably harder to appreciate the texture maybe. I don't know. Um, I feel like you but that's kind can of the fun appreciate of it. the texture. That's kind of the fun of it. It's like, yeah, it's not, I think what's cool about the Silly Sleepover is it's not like super intense, like a, um, like what's a it called? Sweater? Yeah, or like a, an Ingrid sweater. True, so, true, true. Right. It's like subtle, but it's got a design in it. Yeah. And I quite like that, that it's like low key and classy. Um, yeah, we're and so cool. low key. <laughs> um, but I'm looking forward to working out how to wear this one a little bit more. Like it's less, it's less natural to be like, I'll just throw this on. Like, I think I have to think about it a bit more. I also really like the color with like your hair. I know that's like a really random thing, but the contrast oh, is you. really pretty. Yeah. You should, I, I wrote that I should wear it more basically. I will vow to wear it more. Um, nice. Maybe I'll do some more like blue ray knits. No, <laughs> we're moving to blue gray. Oh, wait, where did you do that one? This one? Yeah, because that's like, Oh, blue. Okay. We're just blue. We're just, we're still on blue. Oh, and then we can... We can do blue, then we can do grey, and then colours. <laughs> I can't oh, really contribute... Creams and colours. I can't really contribute to the colours You section. can, that's colour. Yeah, well, that's as good as it gets for me, really, isn't it? <laughs> um, this one is my... Oh, so cool. This one I made probably around March this year. Uh, March, April. They had a revamp, though. Yeah, so this is my Field Day cardigan by Ozetta. Um, I knit this in a yarn by Cama Rose called... Uh, Llama Tweed. Yes. Yeah. Um, which Still I have a whole job bought, quantity. <laughs> I bought at like a festival. It was like a, a one day sort of market thing and it was a total spare of the moment purchase. And then I kind of had to buy a bit more and it was a bit, when I was knitting it, I wasn't in love with the yarn and I fell in and out of love with this project multiple times, but I ended up making this cardigan, which I've worn a few times. I've talked about a lot. Um, it ended up being quite oversized, and so I put it in the washing machine and shrunk it a tiny little bit, which, <sighs> made, it, which sure. made it perfect. Um, and I've worn it a lot more. Oh, actually, that's not true. I've worn it a lot more out of the house. I've probably worn it less because it used to be my like home, like my like just comfy home cardigan. Um, but now it's my like. I feel like it's smart enough to go out in. It was always smart, but this this looks very like more tailored now. Yeah, it's it's got a little bit more structure to it, yeah. like with the felting, it's I kind of held up a little bit. When this bit, I'm like pointing off camera, but like when the trim of it is like rectangular, this is such a niche niche thing. Not niche, but it's just such a random it's just thing. Satisfying. When it's very rectangular or like like a ninety degree, there's something that just makes it look really smart and mm. neat. Um, so I'm I'm really happy with this one, and I um, initially didn't love this yarn. But I now love it. Which is abnormal for you, because I feel like Sarah's really into a tweed. Like oh, a tweed don't get me wrong. Tweed love, will get her. Love, like, I, I, I foresee many a tweed in my future. Um, I just, I think I didn't like the feel of it, but now it's just really soft and beautiful. And oh, it hasn't it even really very peeled soft. very much either. No. So overall. Especially given you put it in the whole washing machine. But yeah. <laughs> This is my field day cardigan by Azetta. This is one is probably a lot more slouchy, like it's easier for it to slip off my shoulders, but it's that's it's a different it's a different style. Have, yeah, different exactly. Style. So yeah. Um, What's I next? I have <laughs> Jacob's right here as well, so he's watching you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> um, I've got his sweater here, which is the zipper sweater by Petite Knit. I'm gonna zip it up. I like ran in and stole it from his closet right before the video. Um, it's so cool, guys. I think this might actually be one of like, oh, I kind of want to like steal it more. 
it's such... my my version is still being knitted but i think it's the combo of the yarn and also the zip it's just it's just so neat i think i think the, this is such a like such a beautiful piece like it's such you should be so proud of it i am it's so such, proud such an incredible knit um also the yarn arrived to make it longer oh nice yeah because i i did mention that in the last video i'm yeah. pretty sure um Jacob the other day I was like I just want to like sit and knit for a bit like I think I'm going to cast in a new project and he was like oh why don't you fix my sweater oh. <laughs> I was like <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry you just asked me you, to work <laughs> you misinterpreted what sitting and knitting for a bit I was like, like I want to do something that sparks joy and he was a bit like I thought it was all the same <laughs> I was like you were so like oh. I was like I am not in the mood for that he was like oh okay like he really just didn't understand <laughs> Like, I just okay. want some mindless stock in it. Yeah. I do not want to be thinking about it. I don't it. want to have to be picking up legs and nah, then... Nah, nah. I'm going to nah. try this on because, like, it's been a while. It's just been in his closet and I miss... It. Oh, it's oh, so... I actually want one so much. It's it looks so, so good. cool. I feel like I'm just going to go for, like, walk my, like, dog and pram, even though I don't have children, but, like... <laughs> or a dog. <laughs> or a dog. Um, it's just so cool. It's I'm cool. in the middle still of knitting my other one. It's in pretty much know? finished, yeah. <gasps> it's, I've just... When I say... No, sorry. It's not pretty much finished. I'm doing the body, but I've done both sleeves. Oh, and I'm, like, up to here, which for me is, like, it's pretty much done. Home stretch. I've done all the, like, parts that I don't like to do. Um, so yeah, so soon I will have one too, but I actually think like as much as I love Lenore yarn and how it's looking and I still love it, I still think this is a winner, like the simplicity the and the, the color and the actual yarn used for it. I would so recommend this yarn yeah. for this project, um, which is so funny because it has and that's, such a that's the, strong opinion of the opposite when I was knitting it. That's the knitting for olive heavy merino. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Knitting for olive knit, uh, heavy merino. And I think the fact it has a bit of marl in it looks good too. It's it's kind of felted slash bloomed in a way that makes a really beautiful fabric. Yeah, that's it. Like it hasn't, it wouldn't have felted because I've literally only no. blocked it, but the blooming is exactly It's just like, it. it's just made a really like homogenous fabric which is beautiful that's my dream like homogenous fabric that like is still like drapey but with a tiny bit of structure mm. but then like no gaps it's the no gaps, gaps yeah, but without yeah. stiffness mm, that's my dream mm, yep um uh, do you want to go let's do some more gray yeah gray um I made two gray things. One's a success, one's a failure. That's okay. That's <laughs> that's a fifty percent pass rate. Oh, uh, okay. Um, what so do you mean? the first thing I made was um, this is one again I made quite early in the year. This oh, is the so Copenhagen pretty. cardigan by Petite Knit. The buttons you put on this are so pretty. Um, so this is using one strand of Great Ocean Road woolen mill uh, four ply, um, which is wool and maybe a bit of alpaca, and then one strand of mohair. Um, which is the Creme Key Soul Wool so Mohair. I love the pockets in it. Wait. So uh, wait a second. <laughs> Do we, have we already addressed this? What's what's going on? I'm oh, sorry. I kid you not. I wasn't even being facetious. I was literally going. These are such cute pockets. And guys, there's like there's still no pocket. Okay. Last time you found there was no pocket. I was <laughs> like, I'm going to fix it. It's because I look at it and I'm just like, oh, such cute pockets. And then you ruin it by not having pockets. Um, so this is kind of like a round crew high neck cardigan. I put so little um, tortoise shell. They're pretty. Sort of mother of pearly type buttons on there which are really pretty i love how it looks yes it's got pockets um that which are very cute they'd be even cuter if they were real so did you do these as an afterthought pocket or whilst you were doing no you, you knit them as you go okay because like and this... i just decided that i didn't want to keep knitting them as i went okay the reason i ask is because like i would totally add <laughs> sorry more hair I would totally add pockets into my cardigans if it was up. I tried. I think that'd be a fun thing to do if anyone's ever <laughs> done that before. Bless you. I'm warning you. I always sneeze in threes. Okay, it's coming. Um, I don't wear this cardigan because it's too small. Oh, this is my dud. Like, no, it's not. It's not a dud. It's just, I just, it, I don't wear it. What do you mean it's too small? It feels too like tight under my arms, tight along the sleeves, and like. I always feel like I'm adjusting it and pulling it and I don't, uh, you don't. I just don't love it. Um, that makes me really sad because it's so beautiful. It's super beautiful. And I think, I think it's just, if it was bigger, like the, it, the problem is it's the size and the yarn combo because it's tight and fluffy, which is a bit uncomfortable. Like if right. it was more relaxed and drapey, I could kind of deal with the fluffiness, 
but because it's kind of really hugging the mohair stuff is like I think I'm really allergic to that <laughs> <laughs> I think we're both unhappy with this garment in short I'm allergic to it which is a shame um so in hindsight I would I like I don't I like the cut I like a round neck I think it's really classic um but I would do I did a medium and I would do a large sorry I don't want to be on camera Which, and that was, yeah, the COVID and fatigue there. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm just living, this is middle life when you have allergies. This is, this is the garment that taught me that petite knit patterns are just so all over the shop sizing wise that I just, oh, you, can't, truly. you can't make a prediction. Shit, yeah, oh, sorry, I, whatever. <laughs> I forget that like a petite knit medium is actually like quite large in most of her things. But then in others, it's like uncomfortably tight. Yeah. So, I mean, this this is not the last petite knit pattern that I've had sizing troubles with this year. Um, and it's I think it's just her deciding what's a style preference and what's a fit thing like. Yeah. And, and I don't know what the answer is there, but it's been a tough year for me with petite knit in terms of fit. I've got better, but this was an early learning curve. Yeah, I think it is tricky, like... I think the first thing I knitted was a size. Like I knit, I think I've told you, like half a half a millimeter size bigger and everything. To get gauge. To get gauge. And then on top of that I knit a size bigger. No, a size smaller. Because she so, does things yeah, oversized. Yeah. But it's not consistent and that's no, what has particularly given me grief. Wait, go through this one and then go through your next petite knit. Anyway. Um so one of the more recent things I made was this which is called the front porch pullover and it is by andrea gorn um oh no i forgot oh this is so embarrassing i forgot <laughs> that i did this really tight <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> when you get fully busted on camera. <laughs> i was like oh i'll just put this on effortlessly <laughs> did i tell you about the tie where this is really mean <laughs> where i made um I made baby Mara, like one of our friend's kids, an Ingrid sweater and I cast it off and the cast off must have just been tight. And I noticed when I did it, I was like, this cast off is kind of tight, like whatever. And then, so I told the dad, like I told Miz, like, hey, when you put this on her, it if it's tight. too tight, let me know because I will fix it. And anyway, she was saying, he starts putting it on her and like, she's got like a cute, large noggin and like he's like pulling on it. I was like no it's too tight stop and he's like no 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 keep crying and she started crying <laughs> and I was like to wear it. but it was like no she actually loves it oh good, good it's good. really cute but like she looks good in it. Suit, it was so funny because it's like the only thing that made him stop was when she started crying he was like I'm taking it too far <laughs> I was like I'm not offended. Your I know it's tight. Your tight. commitment to the jumbo was admirable. No, she loves it so much. Actually, to the point where now it's really cute. Whenever she tries on any, or was given, or put like told to put on anything that's knitted, she goes. She always asks, "Is this made by Paige, or did Paige make this?" <laughs> I only wear hand knitted. Yeah, garments. literally. I'm three like, years old. <laughs> truly, like anything she puts on that's knitted, she's like, "Paige made this." Paige made this. And like, if you ask her, oh, where'd you get that jumper? Like when she wears mm. it, she'll go, oh, Paige made it. Well, at least sometimes she'll just spontaneous, like she'll spontaneously put on the jumper and she'll just be like, Paige. <laughs> it's actually so cute. <laughs> anyway, just a little anecdote. Love it, love it, love it, love <laughs> it. Um, so now that I've got it over my head, um, yes. this is my front porch pullover by Andrea Gorn. I changed the pattern and did a two by two rib um, at the neck and cuffs and hem. And maybe my ribs a little bit tight. You know what? I think it's the because it, hers was also when you do like the two two by two rib cast off. What? Like when you you you've just done a regular cast off because yeah. two by two rib, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what the issue is because that was the same with the Ingrid sweater that I did for her. Oh, true, true, true. It was a two by two, two so I did a regular cast off. And you don't get enough stretch. Yeah. Um, it means that it holds really well once you get mm. it over your head. So. I think it's, I think it works really well. Um, <laughs> just don't cry. <laughs> just don't cry. Um, this is a quite a basic drop shoulder, very subtle balloon sleeve uh, pullover. Um, it's sort of a bit cropped. I like to tuck it into my jeans. Yeah. 
um, groundbreaking. <laughs> and um, this one I made in the same yarn as my yellow April cardigan. This is in Maya, which is 100% baby alpaca um, from Morris and Sons. It's beautiful. This one I did at the recommended gauge, so it's got a lot of beautiful drape in it. Beautiful. I love it. I haven't had a lot of wear out of it because I only just finished it and it's been too hot to wear. But I'm kind of, in my mind, I'm calling this my sick day jumper because I feel like it's the sort of thing I'd wear if I was like having a sick day. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. It's just like, quite niche. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got that like comfy, cozy, but it's still, I think, really like, I think it's got a really nice cut, really classy. I love this pattern. It's, it's a beautiful. Good um, so and this we is, love the yarn. Love the yarn. Great combo. So this pattern is going to come out, I think, in early January. So keep an eye out for it because it's a good one. But yeah. Great. Excellent. I love. Where should we go next? Should we do or should we? No, you talk about something. I've talked about too many. Yeah, no, but like, I think that's just going to happen. No, you talk about something while I try and get this off. <laughs> Last but not least for me, um, this is my Fortune Sweater by Petite Knit. Hold on, you... hold on, hold on. Sorry. Oh my god, so embarrassing. Okay, go, 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 go. Um, this is a fortune sweater by Petite Knit. I am obsessed. I'm equally obsessed. I get so many compliments. And I went to Make a Maker the other day to pick some stuff up. And like even there, like the people working at Make a Maker were like, what pattern is that? Because mm. it's very much like, you know, your raglan sweater. That's not too basic, but the pattern of doing the little eyelets is so easy and satisfying. Um... I love it and I love the yarn in it as well because it's got that light. It's the same as my v-neck. Like it's light, it's, fluffy, it's like a cloud. Soft. The colour is stunning. It's is so stunning. my colour. It's yeah. just my favourite colour. Um, and this is the I've said this probably a million times, but the in lilac Oka 306 yarn held with Kremka Soul Wool in Silky Kid in their I think it's called Dusty Pink. Yeah, it's dusty pink. Beautiful, so um, beautiful. I love the colour so much that um, Maker Maker was actually... Do you know they're phasing out ochre? Oh, is that I why it's on you. sale? Yeah, so Maker Maker has all of their ochre on sale. They're 3 or 6 yarn at the moment. And I went in to pick up some stuff. Um, and yeah, she was like, oh yeah, they're on sale because we're phasing it out. And it broke my heart. Um, so I picked out and bought every skein of the lilac color that they had left which like to be fair like came back came up to just a jumper quantity perfect um which is perfect because it's like my it's my favorite um and it's got yeah like a beautiful balloon sleeve which i love a balloon sleeve i know like it's not everyone's favorite style choice um and it's a bit cropped which is perfect for me um and the difference that i made to the pattern is this is supposed to be like a roll neck that's sewn but i did not sew it because i like to change it up and sometimes i tuck it in and make it like how it is in the pattern mm. and then other days i keep it high neck i love the neck i think it's really classy i love it so much so this is like stunning Hi neck. I'm sure like you guys are gonna know this already because I've worn it in a million videos. Uh, but you know, because Sarah's doing a little try on that too. And like look at the drape. It's look I think the, that's it. Look at the drape! Mm, the fabric. Mm. Uh, the drape. And the like very slight variegation. Yes. It's just so beautiful. And then it like when you tuck it in, it just feels like neat. Yeah. It? Like funnel neck. Cute. So cute. Uh, like um, I think that's my favorite uh, thing of yours. You're not allowed to made. talk about favorite things. I mean, up to I, that can, I, can, video. I can just pass judgment on your okay, knits. Fine. I think that's my favorite. But you yours. don't know what my favorite knit is. Well, yeah, then. well, you'll have to. I'll have to wait for that one. <laughs> okay, your turn. Um, let's do my probably like the only other really outrageously colorful thing that I made this year. Maybe outrageous is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> No, I think this is objectively outrageous. Whoa! Um, this is my Cargill sweater by Rebecca Glow of the Cray Bayer. Um, did I put this one back to front? No. Um, this is... Um, I made this using Knitting for Olive in the colour Dusty Artichoke and Dusty Sea Green. This is a so all-over dip stitch cardigan. Um, again, it's got that like loot lightness and because it's quite an open stitch um i don't know if you can see 
oh it's just it's such a beautiful stitch and it's made such a beautiful jumper like it's it's i've made mine quite long but it's really bit it's just easy to tuck into things. I wear this to work. I was I going to say, it. how have you been going with wear of it? Because I know initially, you know, it was a hard work jumper. Because, like, like, it's got so much work in it. Oh, like, the act of doing it was, um, it's, yeah, it was hard. <laughs> um, this is a really involved knit. And maybe if you, I was thinking, like, just because of the dip, dip stitches. And if you're better at doing dip stitches, then maybe it'll go quicker. But this was definitely the thing that took me the most time this year. It was, the, like just consume most of my life. Um, in particular, the sleeves, yes, I made mine quite long because it's a, meant to be a balloon sleeve. Um, this pattern has taught me that I do not like balloon sleeves. <laughs> um, as someone who will like normally like hitch my sleeves up, it means that I have a lot of fabric here, which I really don't care for. <laughs> uh, it's not good. And so then it ends up turning into this like big balloony type thing <laughs> and it's like I get, I get this cord on stuff at work like it gets get it keeps getting cat caught on like hooks and stuff at Ooh, work nah, so that the only the thing the only thing that makes this not the most perfect pattern for me personally is the sleeves um but I guess the pattern is such that there's no shaping in the sleeve so that you can continue this beautiful pattern of the dip stitches but it does mean that you've got this big puffy balloon sleeve which I just can't really but here's the I thing I would love that I know you would that's like, my dream that, because yeah you you can like carry off the sleeves I don't I think can't. it's about that I think it's I think it's I'm just, just too much of a fidgeter I think would you do like a three-quarter sleeve I feel like you know a lot of people do like a tapered three-quarter sleeve because that's the thing that like, you yeah. I can tell from your face you hate it. I think I also just like pulling my sleeves. You always do that. I do this a lot. So um, this was a really long sleeve to get the length necessary. I had to add like 20 centimetres to the sleeve length. That makes me unwell. Um, Imagine so Sleeve Island on that. It was, it, this. I think this nearly broke me. That was um, Sleeve island. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest island. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was worth it in the end because this is one of my favourite. It's beautiful. It's one, like it's just, it's so beautiful and it's really light and squashy and um, I think it's the first pattern of Rebecca clothes that I have made. It shan't be the last, um, um, but it was really well written and I really love this pattern and I'm really proud to have it as part of my collection for this year. Love it. So yeah. Nailed it. Thanks. Um, you got any more? No, garments? that is that was my last garment, which means we're on to your Wait, last two, three, three, three. three. <gasps> um, this is the one that I'm most anxious to put on today. <laughs> oh, because yes. it's my like, so like solid. Yeah. Um, this is my Ingrid sweater. Um, which again was a bit of a saga because it the sizing. This, uh, yeah, again, this was the early the early days, petite knit sizing issues. I What's going on here? Sorry, did I just like raise something? No, 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 no. Um, this was part of the sizing issue, so. I, no, because you know what? I think you should put elastic in that top bit and yeah. then it'll fix it. Um, like the, the neck is too deep. And is the, that what it is? And because the pattern for the women's one has like a weird like double neck pattern. Oh, bit, yeah, but we I don't didn't like, that. like Yeah. But at that point it was too late. I would have done a shallower neckline had I have known. Right. If that makes sense. Yes. So like it's a bit shallow and so it kind of splays out a bit, which I don't love. But other than that, I'm really, really happy with this. It is I had to knit it twice because I basically knit the whole thing and realized it was crazy big. Um, so this, I have used one strand of eight ply in the Great Ocean Road woolen mills with a strand of the Isaiah mohair. It's beautiful. It's stunning. The first time I did it, so unbelievably soft, guys. I followed. I initially followed the pattern for the women's small, and it was like it was so oversized. It was a joke. Um, so I ripped it all out and I started it again. And I did the size meant for children aged ten years old. And I'm a big person and like this has still got plenty of like ease in it. Well, it's just crazy because in like this was a size small. Mm. And I met gauge perfectly and this was a size small. Yeah. So I know that Petite Knit now, now makes an, a size extra, 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 extra small. small in her patterns, which um, is a good nod towards 
bit of size inclusivity in the other direction. And I mean, I think she's had some issues in both directions, but I appreciate that she's not just saying like, oh, the minimum size for this is as an adult is this big. Um, so I'm glad I did it though, because I have a jumper, which I absolutely love. It feels beautiful. It's something that I love wearing. It's really so easy to throw on. Like, so cool because of, like it just it's just great it's comfy this to throw on the stitch is like i don't know just all the little parts of it are so cool i stressed a long time about getting the right color like i didn't want something too white something too beige there are creams and there are creams there are creams there are creams so i've ended up with this the the deke like the base yarn was white but then the mohair was sort of beige and it's come out with a really nice cream it's perfect um and yeah I love it and it looks great with jeans. <laughs> it looks Everything great, with, great jeans. with jeans. <laughs> I was just reading with um, Anthea the other day and I was saying, you know, it's really funny how as soon as we want to make something sound a little bit like more highbrow, we like make the pluralities sing singular. So, oh, it looks really great with jeans. Looks really good with a jean. Looks really great <sighs> with shorts. With a really nice short. short. Oh, I've never thought about that. It or does like, sound more trendy. Or like, you know, that with like a lovely like pair of like pants versus a lovely pant. Mm, yeah. A white sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> like I worked in retail for so long that it's just become automatic. Anyway, yeah, sorry. Just yeah. an aside. Um, so yes, that's my Ingrid. It was, I feel like it was all the rage maybe a year ago for good reason. It's still... A classic. I still need to make myself one. I have the yarn for it. I just haven't started. Do yourself a favor. Just make it. Okay, I will. Um, you will see it in my 2024 lineup. Um, and then I have two summer knits, um, which haven't got a lot of wear, mainly because it is time. I made them. It's only it's only hit summer now. The first one is this, which is the Sailor Swift tank by Kuta Kika. This is a test knit I did around mid-year, like in the European summer when she released the pattern. It's so cool. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a classic. It's beautiful. It was, I love the eye cord edging and it's so unbelievably neat. Yeah, it's worked really well. I used the Rowan cotton glaze yarn. Um, and it's like heavy. It's, it's got like, like a, quite a good nice weight. way. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and it feels cool. Yeah, it's nice. Like it, it's got quite it a lot of negative ease but it, i think it like it works for this style of garment i think it was very popular this year in european time to have like quite a like cut in racer oh, yeah. style top and yeah. this is kind of of that design it's not super harsh but it is quite like a like a cut i in know what you mean style the side boob high risk <laughs> um so that is the um yeah so this one is the sailor swift tank it's a really good basic and i've seen people knit it in just like plain colors as well it's on my list um, it's a good one. I saw a really cool co color combo actually of like, and this is very me, but like a pink and red. I see you in that. Which I thought it was I very cool. I see you in that. And then my last one, can I find it? Oh, it's there. My last one is what I wore in my last video, um, which, um, so this is not news to anyone. This is my Helianthus tank by Andrea Gorn, um, which is like just a great little cropped. I love it. There's singlet top. Just so much wear out of this, I reckon. I think so. Um, so right. I mean, I, yeah, it's it's a classic. It's simple. It's going to be fun. I'm excited to get lots of wear out of this this summer. It's every everything you want. Everything I want. But yes, that concludes my bits. Um, that was very impressive. Yeah, big year. I think we've had a big year, some nice pieces. So now mm. we'll reveal. Um, so I was thinking, like as a bit of a reflection, mm. what was your favorite yarn to work with of the things that you made? I feel like this is going to be a surprise to absolutely no one, but it was 100% the Ochre 306 yarn. In your purple? Yeah. I mean, I have more of it and I actually knitted another garment but it wasn't this year it, I knitted a, the April cardigan in the same yarn mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's what made me fall in love with it and it was something that when I went to make a maker I would always pick up and touch and dream and love um, and think of like other things that I could make out of it and like you know and whenever we went to like little festivals or whatever yeah, like I would always go to the Oka stand and like look at all the beautiful it's such colors. an interesting blend like the yak and the silk and the wool it is it's yeah a very polymorphous blend it's very soft yeah. um and it's 
for me, the perfect soft fall ply. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, and also I love the colors. I think the colors are really beautiful and really wearable. They have a lot of like, like earthy mm. toned neutral colors. And then even their like brighter colors just feel more wearable. Like they're pretty bright colors. Like, you know, when you can get like a baby pink, it's a but garish. it's, it's like a spotlight baby pink. Like, I don't know. Spotlight won't relate to anyone who's in Europe, but, or like anywhere around the world. Just like box store, craft store. Yeah. It but just, it doesn't have the same luxurious look. Whereas she, they're really thought out dyes. Yeah. And I feel like it's like quite kind of a little bit toned down. Like it feels like a very mature cut. Like they feel like quite classy colors. And because they're hand dyed, even though they're single colors, she doesn't do any of those like bright hand dye yeah. sort of colors. They have that slight variegation to them which is really cool but you so you still get to experience and enjoy a luxurious hand dye without it being like a hectic succulent mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so that's like 100 percent my favorite nice my favorite yarn for the year was the, oh great call the alpaca yeah. sock i think it, it caught me by surprise so much like um it was fun to knit with they are so soft to wear like, i'm so excited to use um one. and like it was just an unusual like oh let's just buy a ball of this at the it was spontaneous it was a spontaneous buy and it was and i just love tweed so much and they're so beautiful um so that's my favorite yarn of the year great i, I love i'm really excited to use mine mm -hmm. what is your favorite pattern of the year or the favorite like actually piece that you've knitted it doesn't even have to be pattern let's say what's your like favorite. my like my all-time absolute favorite thing i made this year this year and what the pattern was and if it's because of the pattern or what sorry <laughs> it's okay <laughs> but that's not urgent um my favorite pattern of the year my all-time favorite thing i feel like we should do that last wait there's another question okay i have some I... other categories oh go okay what is your like what's the your most worn thing i think it's tricky because i think if we think about my most worn thing this year it's still this mm -hmm. however i think it's also because i knit this first at the beginning of the year it's I an think, unfair judgment yeah but, i think yeah. my most versatile piece if we do that mm -hmm, i think that's a fair mm -hmm. call is this 100 yeah. percent, without a doubt this like going forward once it's had time to catch up, I think this will this be my, most worn. Yeah, my yeah. most worn. Yeah. My most worn is absolutely my field day cardigan. That's so funny, like given like everything we talked about. Yeah, like <sighs> it's just so comfy and, and easy to wear. It's like if I'm kind of cold at home, this is what I'll throw on. That's why I thought this would be your sick day. This is this was sick day until <laughs> recently. <laughs> it is still a really excellent sick day cardigan. Um, but yeah, that's my most worn, hands down easily like e like easy like without a doubt like don't even need to think about it i love it so much it's, it's such a such a triumph what other questions do you have i had what is your like the thing that you're most proud of oh uh, or like what was the most <laughs> oh yeah i know 100 percent. surely surely that is what you're guys most proud of. it's so neat have i said that enough also how cool is this it oh i was so intimidated but i'm so proud of this Good. I'm proud of you for it because I'm. It's so beautiful. And also the fact that I knitted it on time. <laughs> <laughs> that is a triumph. I'm most proud of my car guilt. Yeah. Like just because Bloody it was. Fair. It was a slog, but it the it was worth the effort in the end. Um, and it's so beautiful. <laughs> and then I reckon last. What is your all-time favorite thing that you've made this year? Easy. Easy. Yeah. It's it's my favorite. I think it's my favorite thing I've like I've, I've ever knitted. Yeah. I said it before. That's why it pops up all the time. <laughs> I think this is my favorite. This is my. This is the like. This is the hero knit. Amazing. It's just. It's so easy to throw on and so comfy, so soft. I need to knit mine already. So yeah. It's been nice to look back at everything. It has. It's been I nice like to it. think about the year. It's been nice to think about like what's been good and what I've enjoyed making and what like hasn't got as much wear. And, 100%. Like, and also like kind of what you want to do for next year. It's got me thinking a lot about next year. Maybe we'll talk about that next time because we're already well into the over an hour category. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a good, uh, it's a good exercise in reflecting back on what's got the most wear and what hasn't been as successful. Totally. So yeah. Well, uh, Guys, thanks so much for watching and for sticking around. It was nice to share this year with you guys. And thanks for, yeah, like supporting us and watching our videos. We only really just started this podcast this year. So 
yeah it's it, been such a fun year thank yeah. you to everyone who has supported us who has left tips and comments and likes and has subscribed and said lovely things and messaged us and all the lovely things it's been such a delight like this all started like Sarah doing her podcast and then like one day I was like can I just be a special guest <laughs> <laughs> and so you like, became a permanent feature well I totally didn't imagine this would be something that we would go on like you know we talked about doing it and mm. stuff and like watching other people's was always fun and so it's really nice that you know it is something that we plan on continuing it's nice to be able to do it because I think we probably essentially do this anyway even if we didn't film it but it's nice to be able to share and it's with other it's people also, as much as each other yeah i don't know it also kind of like and like we hang out a lot as well anyway but it's kind of nice to be like okay now like show me all of your knitwear start to finish like, yeah. like, <laughs> it's kind of like almost give structure to like yeah now go through everything that you've ever made yes this year. yes I one by one all. i want to see it all <laughs> like i get to see this live sarah like that's what you <laughs> guys don't understand but anyway um thank you so much again um and stick around because we'll, we'll have more things year. coming bye bye Jesus Christ, woman! Oh, no. This is exactly what I meant. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. How? I can't. I can't move. I have to stay here now. Sorry. I, I, have, I cannot move. I have to stay here and hold this.